Buonasera a tutti, good evening and welcome to the Italian Radio Hour. Io sono Viviana and I would like to welcome back our regular listeners and also welcome any new listeners and anyone listening on khbradio.com. Also be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook at the Italian Radio Hour and subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on any past episodes. Vorrei dare il benvenuto ai nostri ascoltatori da tutto il mondo, grazie per essere con noi anche oggi mentre continuiamo il nostro viaggio per l'Italia e la cultura italiana. Back in July we had a very interesting episode on Italian fashion and part of that conversation was with Salvatore Giardina, an assistant professor in the textile development and marketing at the Fashion Institute of Technology of the State University of New York. Today, we are also joined by Maddalena Terranni, the textile curator and program director of Fondazione Ratti on beautiful Lake Como. But before we bring our guests on, a little bit of pubblicità. Parli italiano? Do you want to learn, improve or master your Italian? Istituto Mondo Italiano can help. Located in the heart of Regent Square, Mondo Italiano offers small group classes and one-on-one private tutoring to help you learn Italian in no time. Visit us online at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org. Un caffè, per favore. My first cup of coffee sets the tone for my entire day, and I get my coffee at La Prima Espresso. La Prima has been brewing Pittsburgh's best coffee for nearly 35 years. Try any of their in-house roasted varieties of beans from all over the world at home, or come and enjoy an espresso or a cappuccino at any of their locations, where their friendly baristas and familiar faces will make you feel at home. Because a trip to La Prima is like a trip to Italy, only closer to home. Well, cara Maddalena, buonasera and welcome to the program. Buonasera, grazie. But uh, I'm so excited to have you, and I think we should uh, share a little bit uh, with our audience how you and I got connected um, this past summer in beautiful Lake Como. Uh, by the way, how is Como uh, this time of the year? Before we get into our conversation about textile, uh, Como in the yeah, summer yeah. and Como in the fall. Como in the fall is wonderful. I love it because the weather is not so hot and the color of the lake, you know, are quite vivid, but and uh, it's a it, it's an unusual atmosphere. It is an unusual atmosphere, very exactly. bright and very dark, suddenly dark, you know, mm -hmm. after four four o'clock in the afternoon for half is, past four. Is so, there a little bit of fog in the morning, uh, or no? It's always clear. Not, not that much now. Not that much. No, no. Okay. It is uh, not so cold, so we have to wait for. Okay, me. we have to wait a couple of yeah, months. For my, yeah, okay. at least one month. Maybe <laughs> in one month we have fog again. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. So let me share with the audience how we got connected. Uh, as I said, the culprit this time was the beautiful work of uh, Salvatore Giardina and uh, the program that he has created for the Fashion Institute of Technology of the City University of New York. So basically, Professor Giardina had organized a um, visit for his uh, the students in his program uh, to different factories and mills and designers in Northern Italy, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. And I just don't know how I came across um, the pictures that he was um, posting on Instagram. And uh, uh, the one when at uh, yeah, the Fondazione Ratti, where, where you at, Madalena, really caught my attention. And I started to follow the progression of the trip with extreme curiosity and maybe jealousy <laughs> good way in a good way uh because the things that i was seeing it was were amazing things and fabrics that i have, would never have had access to so i was bold enough to introduce myself to salvatore uh we brought him on the uh, radio to talk about the program we had one of his uh, students also joining us sharing her first time experience and then I said, I'm going to Italy, I'm going to be uh, in Lake Como. Is there any chance you could introduce me 
to Magdalena and maybe um, she might be available for a visit. So magic happened and uh, you and I met and I just could not believe uh, my eyes to the access of the fabrics um, that are collected in Fundazione Antonio Ratti. But a lot of people, they are not as, uh, as lucky as you and Salvatore, they are not in, in the fabrics or in the fashion industry, might ask themselves, who is Antonio Ratti? So I think we should start from the very beginning to okay. talk about the important work that Antonio Ratti has done, um, not only for the textile industry, but also as an entrepreneur and the way that he approached how also employees should be treated uh, to culture and so forth. So I'm going to let, let, uh, let you share uh, information uh, first about these amazing men. Okay, so we can start uh, with these first images. This is him, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Antonio Ratti. Uh, he was a, 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 a very important entrepreneur in Como. He born in 1950. Uh, 15 and he passed away in 2002 so this is the range of data he was working on and he, he, he was he started working very early he was 14 years old and he was working during the day as a textile designer for ties and he was going to school in the in the evening to the city feature which is a, a specialized school in Como for textiles and he was a very great designer. So he started working uh, with a, this famous studio in Como called um, Gualdo Porro when he was very young. And at the age of uh, 20, he decided to open his own studio. And I, let me share with you. This is another images where you can maybe see, uh, maybe it's too small, but this is a, um, a table that I arranged for an exhibition with all this small design about the drawing about him. And so he was working in ties. And you see, this is a technical paper for mm -hmm. uh, textiles. And this is another images with a drawing for printing. So mm -hmm. this was the field he was working on. Then in uh, 1958, mm -hmm. He decided that he wanted to um, grow again, grow more in the um, production. So mm -hmm. he had a small passage in a small um, factory in Como, mm -hmm. uh, only for um, loom fabric. Then uh, in 1958, he decided to uh, build this very big new it factory. Is. Yes, it looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was very innovative. Uh, you see this um, seminar, uh, this was for the recycling of water. So Mr. Ratti was very, uh, um, very interested also in the ecological part of, of the textile production. And a very innovative factory means that he wants to have air conditioning in the printing, you see here the printing. And this is very uh, unusual for those time. I mean, we're talking yeah. about the, the, the 50s. It's not we're talking about the uh, um, yeah. today's dates. So it, he was a visionary on, on that yeah. of the fact that he wanted Definitely. to create um, the yeah. uh, most suitable working conditions. So yeah. uh, that, that is pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, also with the air conditioning and you see this big window. So um, employer could work in a very uh, um, comfortable way, you mm -hmm. say, comfortable. And uh, aside of the factory, Mr. Ratti built this, um, this new area that in the day was a canteen and during the evening was a transform in a culture situation. So, so what kind of, a, yes, what kind of events were, like, for instance, for those that will uh, eventually see the interview uh, online, you can definitely see a piano, some jazz musicians, a huge yeah. audience. So a little bit of music and... Um, yeah, mm -hmm. well, jazz music, classical music, the school of theater. So a lot of, a lot of entertainment for, for the employer. So they could have 
so the, the, the um, Mr. Ati wants to have culture in, 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 into, the, um, into the factory, which was quite unusual at that time. And it was even more difficult for the employer to inform themselves, you know, outside of the factory. There was no 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 internet, no nothing. So they didn't have really the the, the uh, television at home. So everything was 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 um, organized inside of the factory. And also, this has like a, a dual benefit. First of all, is like you are enriching your employees. So because in any in any company, the I, my my personal opinion that the biggest as, assets are the people first, and mm -hmm. by taking care of the people in this case, also enriching them. Um, uh, you're also by providing the cultural activities that generates even more creativity. Whether that was uh, uh, that could influence positively uh, people's productivity or ingenuity in 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 the work. That's I wanted to go. <laughs> I want to go back in time and work for Mr. Ratti. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we also, we we would like to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you can clearly see from this this initial approach how important for him was the. Uh, Mm, the approach of, of culture inside of, of the that connecting also uh, worker be, one uh, between one between each other you know they were mm -hmm. connected also not only with the work but also with the culture culture situation mm -hmm. so it was very uh, very strong the the impact mm -hmm. on them sure um, I believe you might have some images also coming up on an exhibit in Rome. Am I not? Uh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And also this is uh, um, where, um, you know, Salvatore, he, um, uh, welcome to uh, the program. I'm so happy to have you back. We my only say great things about you in your absence. Don't worry. <laughs> my, apo my apologies. We had just a, a crazy day today, so I apologize. It's a Monday. It's a Monday, especially. Uh, but, ciao, um, Madalena. <laughs> yeah, ciao. <laughs> Monday, Monday, that seems to be on Friday, you know? Aye, the, aye, aye. It was one Monday that I, I was telling uh, Valentina, I'm so tired today, this Friday. And she was looking at me, she said, you know that it's Monday today? And I was so tired, you know? <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, my Something. goodness. Um, yeah. But those look like what we had seen with Madalena with my class, um, the, mm -hmm. the, um, the exhibits. I, I still have students telling me how much of a wonderful time they had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's incredible. How cute they are. Yes. They were very, very nice people, very, um, with a great knowledge. That's because you are a great, uh, uh, professor so no no no, no. <laughs> yeah you're teaching them very deeply and i really appreciate so i'm i feel that unusual. I'm, the, I'm, <laughs> I feel that I'm the, the the one that's like the outsider because i can only appreciate the beauty but uh the description of um uh maybe also how the process that uh, uh, Mr. Ratti was uh, following to start collecting uh, textiles. Um, and I think this might be a snapshot of some of uh, the textile that he was interested um, in. Um, Madalena, can you tell us a little bit about uh, that? And I'm sure there are also probably some of the pieces uh, that Salvatore um, I have asked you to show his students because one of the things I don't know how many maybe you can tell us um, how extensive the collection is but um, uh, you Madalena is a curator yeah. you tend to understand what are the needs and wants so to speak of the people coming to the Fondazione to pull out things that might inspire them or might give them in, for more um, additional information on their research topic. So tell us a little bit first about uh, Mr. Ratti's, um, how, what was the process for his collecting? Yeah, so Mr. Ratti as an um, entrepreneur in textiles, he used to uh, collect textile from all over the world at the beginning for inspiring himself for the new collection to build, you know? 
Uh, so the first archive he bought, it was in 1960. And then uh, he keep on buying um, either in a market or in an auction, depends on what he was uh, looking for. Mm -hmm. And so he built this enormous collection with uh, 30,000 items, more or less. Yeah, with uh, and 300, uh, 3,000 actually sample books. So you see an image here of samples books. And so in 1985, he had all this uh, patrimony in his in the factory, and he wants to give back to the um, people, you know, to the town, his collection. So he decided to found it, the foundation, and he bought back all the collection with his money you know both mm -hmm. and give uh, as a present to the foundation the whole collection wow. so this was a very uh, an operation of uh, big generosity and so um, everything started in 1985 mm -hmm. then mr ratti wants to be very innovative also with the catalogation and the digitization. Sorry. And so I keep on studying the single uh, part of collection, starting from example, pre-Columbian collection from second century till 12th century, Coptic collection, which is um, these are, are the two parts of the ar archaeological collection. Um, Copti are in the range from 10th century, 12th century, more or less. And then he started with a um, renascimental velvet, six from the uh, 18th century, and so on. So, uh, and a big collection of show coming either from India and Europe. Um, production, 2, 250 items, more or less. And so a collection of cravat, which mm -hmm. are um, ties for women, mm -hmm. half of the 19th century. So the collection is it's, it's very, it's, it's enormous. Mm -hmm. And the operation that he, that he did at that time was uh, to call um very important people that were studying the single for studying the single section of of the collection uh, make a publication and a, an exhibition mm -hmm. publication exhibition and study and 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 so uh, it was a very uh, important um work he did for the the world of a uh, historical stu study uh students and and also normal people that wants to come and mm -hmm. have a look at yes. and here this is a, the exhibition of rome where i mix up all the pieces uh, uh like a, a a trip all over the world mm -hmm. and uh, salvatore do you recognize some of the items that uh, um have been pulled out these items uh because also the uh how valuable they are need to be handled with extreme care so um upon bringing your students to fondazione ratti i'm sure you had talked to uh, maddalena to pull out specific um uh, pieces what want what did you want your students to 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 see what was important for your program well i, I think we what we started uh, first of all there were so many periods <clears throat> to to look at we couldn't possibly look at everything, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a few span of a few hours. So it was a really difficult decision as to to see which ones, because as you know, you get to see one, but you're not seeing the other. I mean, we could literally spend all day, all week in the archives and still not see everything. So mm -hmm. uh, I think what we had started with, yes, the 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 two level velvet the two pile height velvet from i believe the 16th or 15th century i'm not sure but uh, those were very century. i'm sorry F 15th, 15th century. century yeah and yeah. what was really unique is that when you when when you speak of velvet these days it's generally one height of the pile 
But what was so interesting that this velvet had two heights of the pile. In other words, two, two fibers sticking up to create that velvet. Mm -hmm. So extremely advanced for that time. And honestly, I haven't seen a lot of two pile height velvets today. I mean, mm -hmm. it's the fact that they had it in uh, back then, hundreds of years ago, and, and, and it's really not done today. But the velvets were very, uh, um, very rich to look at because they had texture um, and there was a, a good contrast. Uh, the Edo uh, Japanese silks were very popular. The Persian fabrics were very popular. I remember when Madalena was unrolling the Persian fabric, you know, everyone's eyes lit up. Uh, so it, it, was, it was actually quite fascinating. Um, you know, b between uh, the Edo silks, the Renaissance velvets, uh, my personal favorite are the Coptic uh, textiles. We went to another room to see those. Um, I, I, I couldn't leave Fondazione Rati without seeing a Coptic uh, a textile. So that was, that was a personal favorite of mine. And um, I, I think there weren't any favorites because everyone loved everything. Yes. which is great but and, and it just it shows you the interest of the students oh the one previously i, I think um it shows you how much mm -hmm. how interested the students were and actually what was a really nice surprise uh you, we couldn't have planned well madalena couldn't have planned this any better is that there was an fit exhibit from 1989 uh -huh. and it just yeah. so happens that the student that took a picture of the fabric won the photo contest with that picture because it had the FIT 1989 exhibit of Rati. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, may I ask this, uh, the, the velvet, was it used um, um, if we have information to uh, make clothes or was it used for uh, tapestry? Well, a little bit of both. Um, at that time, what was the use of velvet mainly for velvet? For, was used uh, either for furnishing and for um, garments. Okay. It was the same okay. uh, production. Mm -hmm. We have a different kind of production, a little bit uh, up to the centuries in 18, uh, 17th century, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where the decorative motif become smaller but we don't have you here any any samples but this was for garments and uh, mm -hmm. garments and furnishing yeah those so of them. let's talk about <laughs> how maybe a designer was getting their inspiration because i'm sure there was a lot of studying or consulting like some of these pieces are just so beautiful. And uh, um, do you have any insight about how a designer was going about getting inspired and doing some research? Um, yeah, so we, we have some samples from 18th century, but in this case, we propose, uh, we share with uh, Salvatore this wonderful shawl. The name of the shawl is Dendera. Mm -hmm. uh, which is part of the collection of Mr. Ratti and actually was the preferred shawl of Mr. Ratti. <laughs> and the name of the shawl is Dendera, was made in France. Mm -hmm. This is not from India. And the designer at the time was um, Hebert, and he was a France designer inspiring himself, going to the um, um, Bibliothèque of, uh, of Paris, and he was, there was this guy, this Zodiac that was taken to the library. And, and so this, this guy was there and he was uh, copying in a way, this, uh, this the, all the motif of, of this Zodiac coming from Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he translated the, uh, in, uh, in, in textiles, and you see here, here uh, you can see the zodiac. But uh, the very funny things is that he doesn't have a lot of uh, 
decorative motive from, from, from Egypt. So he decided to use the Brahma, you see this Brahmino mm -hmm. into the center. So he, uh, designers were copying, but with a lot of fantasy, mm -hmm. you know? With oh, fantasy. They were so putting their own input the, as well. Yeah, so the first inspiration was this uh, kind of, uh, of documents and this other documents. And he, and he, but the designer was mixing up, you know? So you see this Brahma, which is doesn't mean nothing inside of there. All the different so, inputs and the re elaborating and then coming out with their own. So textile designers are never be are never so scientific. Mm -hmm. They just want to use fantasy and mix decorative motive as they they like. Mm -hmm. And this was happened also in 18th century. Wonderful. So yeah. And uh, so you have some other images that you would like to uh, share with us. Uh, some of the, um, again, when we talk about these is our highly curated tables where again, you uh, select um, different pieces. Um, yeah. and, uh, <clears throat> this is, tell us a little bit about. Yeah, these are all, 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 all uh, this is a, is a, is a uh, all new textiles from, 1980, mm -hmm. but Mr. Ratti was uh, experiment. They are a kind of experimentation that it, Mr. Ratti did, looking back to the past at the Indian show with the mm -hmm. Kashmir motif. And it was, uh, I don't want to go deeper in the technical, but uh, these are double, uh, kind of double, double, double printed discharge and in application, or he was using some very uh, new uh, pigment and mixing it, mix all the, the technique together. Mm -hmm. And this was made for him because he wanted to uh, exhibit, as it was, we were telling before, um, his collection of show, but not only the historical part of the collection, but mixing, them with the with the um, with new textiles studied by him, mm -hmm. and the first exhibition was the one that Salvatore was telling before, was in FIT in New York in 1986, 1987, and this is the the small small um, it is an handkerchief mm -hmm. on silk printed with a. With the Kashmir motif that Mr. Ratti was uh, using for inviting people mm -hmm. to come to the exhibition. Uh, before maybe we talk about uh, some other exhibitions, uh, Salvatore was the trip that I start following this uh, early in the, in the summer, and, and I don't remember exactly when you went. The first one where you took the students, and um, why was he so important to you to take the students? Um, I mean, it, it might sound obvious, but uh, uh, what was your purpose of taking the students? Because this probably has been a lifetime experience that, that wouldn't be able to replicate by themselves. I'm, I'm having some technical problems. Can you hear sure. me? Uh, yes, absolutely. We can yeah. hear you. Nice okay, well. yes. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I thought it was important and not just to visit the mills. Uh, we went to visit uh, Rati, the mill itself, but I thought it was really important to see the museum. Uh, and it was just as important as Madalena had mentioned uh, with Mr. Rati in terms of inspiration of design, because designers today are not inventing anything new. What they're doing, they're repurposing uh, inspirations, whether it's color, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, a, a, a textile pattern, that gets reinterpreted from an older pattern. So a lot of the designs you see today that are used, they were actually designed hundreds of years ago, but they're stylized today in different manners and forms. Mm -hmm. And we get to learn, especially in the history of textiles, you get to learn what was the purpose of the design. And you know, many and hundreds of years ago, these designs actually had meant something. Like for example, the, in the Persian world of textiles, you know, there was the, there was Haravaki. And what Haravaki means is the lack of space because it, it, it was known that if you wanted to have a textile or product that was say good for 
spiritual purposes that it all the empty spaces had to be filled with some sort of pattern so it, it meant that it was fulfilled and then over the years you know just people accepted that and added on to it and it's it's sort of like fractal geometry you know you, you start with a simple fern and it just keeps on growing and i i think it's so it's so important to understand the history behind anything mm -hmm. whether it's a garment a, a textile because then it, in order to understand the product today you must understand how it originated and uh, that's actually a great point the fact of this uh, um coexistence or let's say bridging uh the past the antique with the modern and mm -hmm. i think mandalena you have also some mm -hmm. images to tell us about future exhibits obviously that have occurred but after the one at fit where yeah. it was clear uh this uh, coexistence uh and probably quite uh, important factor of connecting l'antico e il moderno. Mm -hmm. You see here, for example. Yes, let's describe it just in, for ah, our- you want to go back to here, okay. Just for uh, our, our audience that might listen to the interview before yeah. getting to see the video interview. So uh, a little bit of uh, where are we? Where This exhibit, uh, where was it um, um, held? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the first one in uh, in New York in FIT, uh, the first one in 1987, and Mr. Ratti was using, as you te I, I tell you before, the collection of show with the interpretation that he made by himself, looking at the past with the new textiles, uh, and let me say that Mr. Ratti has a. a in enormous respect about the past. Mm -hmm. He was looking but not copying, mm -hmm. which is something that a lot of uh, sometimes happened, especially in fashion, that you look back to the past just for copying. And this is a great lesson because he, he, he never did such a copy, but just an interpretation of the, of the past. And so you see here this manichini, he was working on it. And this is new and old together. The new one is the one down here. Mm -hmm. So an in, in interpretation also, also with a new color, new, new, new motive, new everything. Never, never copying the same, the same, the same. Mm -hmm. This is, and the exhibition moved at that time from New York to Japan to the Bunka. And this is a Bunka, uh, it's like a mountain, you know, of, uh, uh, of new textiles. And, and then the exhibition came back to Milano to the Castello Sforzesco. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, an images of, uh, of Milano. We don't have a lot of images, I'm sure. Um, I'm afraid. So I'm showing you the one that we have, but um, I really like also to look at this uh, thinking about Mr. Ratti working with the architect Luigi Caccia Dominioni, who was a very famous architect, very friend of Mr. Ratti, and they were studying together how to, um, the, the, the new installation. You see this uh, um, way of, uh, of, of uh, exhibit a shawl is not possible now anymore because they are not protected by you know dust or, or people that are coming and touch and whatever so it is a, a, it, 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 you can see by it was a, a totally and 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 it was actually unusual because he was the first one putting together the past and the and the and the interpretation uh, the modern interpretation in an exhibition in Texas mm -hmm. was the first. This is uh, another images. Mm -hmm. 
also Milan. And then we go back to now. <laughs> this is uh, our last exhibition in Como. Um, it was a great exhibition about Mr. Ratti, and I did I uh, wanted to reuse this this kind of uh, display for the show. Mm -hmm. And I could do it because these two shows are not in the collection. They are the owner of the family, and they let me know. They let me let you, exhibit yeah. in this way. Yeah. Where is the location? We see uh, at the Fondazione. It's a beautiful. No, space. this one was in uh, in Villa Olmo, which is a neoclassical villa uh -huh. uh, um, in Como. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. And and this is another exhibition in Mantua, in Palazzo Te, in 2017. This is the Dendera. And the other point of the of uh, the foundation is that we, we are working also with contemporary art. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ratti was the first one organizing a, a summer school, inviting artists to, um, to, um, uh, to, um, to, um, to, um, to, um, to, Praticamente invitava gli artisti per, per eh, come insegnare una, un nuovo approccio al disegno eh, per, per chi lavorava anche nel tessile. Ok, so he was inviting uh, uh, people to learn about the approach and how to relate and uh, again new approaches to how to work the fabric, how to approach themselves. Uh, to yeah, this. so okay. we still have this course, but now it's deep. Um, when, when Mr. Ratti passed away, her do his daughter, Anni Ratti, which is our president, and she's mm -hmm. a conceptual artist, she transformed this, uh, this course in a course with a conceptual artist. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we exhibit the textile, there is always more or less an artist working with textiles. In this case, uh, the Dendera is in dialogue with uh, this uh, Miro, which is a Miro of a great artist called um, Gerard Richter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, and this is another exhibition here in the foundation. And in this case, uh, the textiles, the velvet, are in dialogue with another artist, an American one. Well, uh, the name is Valid Rad. And so it's interesting for us to working with them. In this case, uh, Validrad, he was working with me, uh, asking me which kind of animals I'm afraid of. Because, you know, all the collection is, it, 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 it is in a storage with temperature control, humidity control. And I'm always looking after every piece is like a baby because I'm afraid <laughs> of, you know, animals and stuff. And he was asking me that, and I said, wow. And I said, um, so we were going on a study just to see which, he wanted to know every, every single animal, every single bugs, what he's eating, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he was studying that. And in this picture uh, on the wall, uh, this is his work. Well, he, he, so imagine this animal coming inside of my cavo. I said my, which is not mine, but uh, it's like a, <laughs> my baby coming in, eating part of the textiles and leaving this form and then walking through another white um, sheet and leaving the same form aside. So this is a work uh, going in this direction. And, you know, artists, great artists, always um, understand where th they have to work on uh, so deeply inside, inside, inside the, um, I don't know if it's going to be but inside of the, the person they have in front of, uh -huh. you know? Yes, the audience. So this with Validrad was a great uh, work we did together. And mm -hmm. you, you know very well my, uh, my frightness. <laughs> no, no, you yeah. learn all about what you were afraid of. Uh, yeah. This is uh, this is fascinating. As I said, um, the experience that uh, thanks to your program, Salvatore, you also created for your students, and then for me, tagging along first virtually onto your program, and then <laughs> um, having had the ability to meet up with uh, uh, with Madalena uh, over the summer. Um, 
we'll let, we'll let uh, Madalena rest for a few minutes. Um, and uh, Salvatore, where, where did your sensibility towards fashion and fabrics come from? Um, you share with our audience, but that was back in, in July <laughs> when we first brought you on. So let's get uh, the audience reacquainted a little bit with, um, uh, with your story. Did you have anyone in your family that was somehow um in the clothing industry or anything uh, well, that might have inspired you well my my when i was growing up in brooklyn my, my mother was a seamstress but i never really paid attention to that mm -hmm. it was just a job she had um just to make some extra money and she made my uh, my sister's outfits they were beautiful she she, she subscribed to a, ma a German magazine, a pattern making magazine called Burda. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> where the patterns were there uh, and she would open up the paper and create different dresses for my, and I always said to my sisters, well, you're lucky, you can get all the garments custom made for you and I have to go buy them. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that really never was my intention at the beginning. Actually, my intention in the beginning was to be in the merchant marine because my grandfather and my great grandfather and my and my Sicilian family, it was I came from a long line of uh, merchant marine officers. Mm -hmm. My grandfather owned two ships. Uh, one was torpedoed in World War Two. Um, and the other one made its fate hitting rocks. So, but um, I grew up thinking that, you know what, I was going to join the Navy uh, as a navigator and let, that would help me uh, in my, my career for, to be in the Merchant Marine. Mm -hmm. However, when I was actually in the Navy, I realized that maybe to be out at sea for seven months at a, at a time was probably not the best career choice because I was I'm more of a, a person where I've got to go see, do things. Uh, my grandfather did tell me wonderful stories of the trips that he went. He went to the Black Sea, off of Africa, Japan, uh, told me so many colorful stories of um, life in the merchant uh, marines with the Italian merchant marines in the 1930s and 40s. Uh, escaping capture by the allies in North Africa. It was something really out of a movie. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then I applied to FIT because I, I wanted a career in, in an industry where it afforded me the ability to travel <laughs> yet st still be based in New York City. So I chose uh, textiles. Mm -hmm. But my real love for textiles really uh, didn't really, I would say, kick in until. I took the uh, class called History of Textiles, where I had this wonderful professor who created her own textbook of the history of textiles. So when I was going through the Fondazione Ratti with Maddalena, and here she is showing us all these wonderful textiles, I'm flashbacking to my class <laughs> and learning all about the history of Paisleys and um, how the kingdom of Sicily went and took silk weavers from present day Turkey and brought them to Sicily. And then from Sicily made its way up to Lucca. Um, and we learned so much. She was so enthusiastic that you couldn't not learn anything in that class and because of her energy. And I've always admired that class. I saved her textbook. I guard it to this day. So Madalena, when I retire, I will give you that textbook. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and that's where I, we were, you know, she taught me about Coptic textiles and, and literally the complete history of textiles. Mm -hmm. and, and I was, and going back a little further, when I was in middle school, I wanted to be an archaeologist. So my love of antiques, of the ancients, medieval, combined with textiles made for the perfect storm right mm -hmm. so uh and i mean i i still do a lot of reading and and whenever something comes up of ancient discoveries um i'm always reading uh, those stories but 
but what's really interesting about textiles is that we have in our hands what people wore hundreds of years ago. So you have to think about what was on their minds? What were they thinking? Why did they wear these clothes? Was it a wedding? Was it a, a baptismal? Was it uh, an event in someone's life? Because these fabrics survived because they were important, like saving a wedding dress. Or, um, and, and one can't help think about not just the people who wore them, but the people who made them. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, it's, it's my way of connecting to the past. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, it's funny because uh, when I was in, uh, in Sardinia this uh, uh, past summer, uh, they have a very strong and old uh, tradition of basket waving, but differently, differently from any other baskets that I have ever seen. The middle part is made of fabric and I was able to acquire actually three of them and bring them back to the US. And the fabric is still in great condition, but is, it is definitely a very old piece of um, fabric. And it's not, you know, it's like, it was so important to me because not only was a design that was different to see the piece of fabric in, 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 in the middle, but the same, I, I'm still having every time I hold one, he said, well, who was carrying this basket or what was mm -hmm. there? Uh, was it bread? Was it something else? And who came up with the design? Because the other thing is what inspired those people in those, what were the elements that contributed to their own creativity? Was daily life? Was he the, 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 the gods, the ancestral uh, elements? And uh, it's fascinating. And uh, the students um and even i that i'm from italy i've never been exposed to these before let alone students in uh, your programs how was the i'm sure the reaction of this program that it was not just and sorry study abroad program mm -hmm. must have been welcomed really with lots of great enthusiasm oh there were i mean when we left the fondazione the students told me how, how impressed and how they love Madalena and the whole exhibit. And, you know, you know it's when you're studying and then you're in that environment, as Madalena has mentioned before about uh, Mr. Rati designing a factory that is a hospitable factory, not just four walls where they had the printing tables that had a big window. We went, we were there, we went to visit Rati. And by the way, Rati probably was the only mill that we were not allowed to take pictures inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Because, so the customer, you know, yeah, yeah. we're afraid that people can, you know, take picture and exactly. going on yeah. Instagram. Mm. Yeah, it, and the students just loved, loved it. And and I think the, it, it was the, the, the idea of, of studying, of looking at the past, understanding how to interpret the past for the future. Uh, and you know, when I used to design textiles, I would purchase old swatches from the 1920s. And we did this, it was actually quite common about 30 years ago, we would buy old fabrics, not just to copy them as Madalena had mentioned that Mr. Rati never did, but we would reinterpret them in terms of colors and patterns and you know, making the stripes a little narrower or wider or selecting different shades. And, and then using new technology from old design. So when students see how well-designed fabrics were back then and garments, they get inspired. Mm -hmm. So they have to see it with their eyes Obviously, we, we cannot touch them, but but seeing them, colors, patterns, and the stories of inspiration, that is so important today because to be a good designer today, you must be inspired, inspired by your surroundings around you, trips that you take, places you visit. Uh, what people had produced years ago can inspire uh, a collection. Mm -hmm. Or a series yeah. of collections. Uh, the 
the geography of Fondazione Rati being on Lake Como is such a beautiful location. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that also adds to it as well. So I, I think, I mean, overall, the students were so, so happy. Um, the, even the school said that that was probably one of the nicest trips um, that was <laughs> sent abroad. So thank you, thank you, Magdalena. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'm embarrassed, you know, because so many compliments. <laughs> and um, I'm very happy because they were really extraordinary people, all of them, the guys. And they're very uh, enthusiastic, really, uh, with the heart, you know. They were there with the mind, but also with the heart. So um, I really appreciate uh, and also because, you know, when we talk about, but this maybe is more towards like the production of a garment, um, things have changed where, uh, you know, we, we, we see the, cl the closets expanding and expanding, everyone having, not everyone, but, you know, closets being filled to the brim and people still saying, I don't have anything to wear because um, people got uh, into the habit of, changing unfortunately and over purchasing and then kind of having to deal with that little guilt trip and then donating but it still creates um you know unfortunately the side effect of a huge pollution so i think it's it goes back to the very beginning from designing to production there is some sort of a responsibility from the very set us as consumers, obviously, where the we are the biggest uh, offenders on that, but also from uh, the 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 production of the the fabric and and the design to set up the the examples and to kind of design for life instead of designing for just one season and move on to um, unfortunately creating a, a spiral. Um, so we have also had um, guests from the Prati area and uh, how the fabrics are being re recycled, recycled yeah. and they yeah. get a second, uh, a second life. Um, well, unfortunately, our time you know, together is up and uh, I was so excited to have you both at this in the same place even though it's virtually and i look forward to maybe having the ability to have a spritz all together in the beautiful garden of fondazione rati yeah um, in june like june that. june <laughs> we are, we are, we are, we are organizing in june actually, <laughs> the, 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 the. i actually uh Madalena, well, this is for you. Um, we're actually thinking of now with the dinner, we're having a, a buffet dinner, but we're going to turn it into a formal event. So I'm coming with my tuxedo. Uh, <laughs> and uh, definitely showing that Sue Professor nickname that uh, you earn uh, by showing up in a tuxedo at an exam. So unfortunately, our hour is up. And El Big Ben ha detto stop. Uh, it is time for us to say arrivederci e alla prossima. And I would like to thank you all for tuning in into the program. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have any trouble topics that you would like us to address, please contact us at the Italian Radio Hour at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Uh, remember, if you or any of your family and friends have missed a prior episode or would like to listen to this episode again, uh, please visit our website at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org and click on the Italian Radio Hour tab, where, or you can also um, hear our podcast wherever you catch your favorite uh, podcast. We would like to thank our guests, Maddalena uh, Terrani. And uh, Salvatore Giardina, our sponsors, Istituto Mondo Italiano, La Prima Espresso, and Alla Boara for the music. If you're not living in the Pittsburgh area or you might be out of town, remember you can catch us streaming us uh, streaming on um, live at khbradio.com every Thursday at five o'clock. And be sure to like us on Instagram or Facebook at Italian Radio Hour. Until next time, alla prossima. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Ciao.